Welcome to Carly Tackles, an underwater LED fishing light. You can use this light off the dock, over the edge of a boat, or down an ice fishing hole. We are going to make our own with a 30 foot cord, but you can also find some online. The prices vary between $25 to $200. Then the higher end ones are bigger and have the longer cord. First things first, I needed to track down some 12 volt waterproof LED lights that were green, which is ideal for lake water. I tested two different lights. The strip on the right was half the price, definitely greener, and the strip on the left was double the price and definitely brighter. I decided to go with the brighter version, but you can find both of the links in the video description below. I'm using one and a half inch diameter PVC. I purchased two end caps. I place one on the end temporarily and mark it with a sharpie. Next, I'm going to drill a hole under the line to allow for the wiring from the lights to go through to the inside of the PVC. The diameter of the hole will depend on which light strips you choose and the thickness of the wire you're trying to run through it. You want this hole to be as small as possible. We are then going to wrap the light around the PVC pipe. Some of the lights come with a sticky backing. I don't want to trust that. So I'm also using CA glue after every so many wraps around the PVC. Be mindful of the glue. If you get some on the outside of your light strip and then it sticks to something and you pull, it can pull off the coating from the light strips. And you would then have to seal that with some silicone to prevent water from damaging your lights. Continue wrapping your lights around the PVC pipe, applying CA glue every so often. We don't want to cut the pipe right where we end the lights. We need it to go into another end cap. So I use the end cap to determine where I should cut my pipe. If you purchase the same lights that I did, you'll notice it has an extra wire coming out of it so you can connect other strips. We need to cut that off and then seal it up. I am using heat shrink tubing. I am using a soldering iron to heat the tubing, but you can also use a heat gun. I apply CA glue to the end of the tubing as well as the PVC pipe and hold it down until the glue dries. I use a reciprocating saw to make the cut. The blade is all purpose and designed for PVC. This whole thing needs to be waterproof. I'm using some clear silicone that is waterproof and exterior rated. First, I apply a little to a toothpick to try to fit it all into that hole that we drilled for the wire. And then I go at it from the inside. We wanna make sure no water can get in. I'm also applying some silicone to the end with the heat shrink tubing. I want to make sure that no water can get in from either end and mess up my electrical. We need to drill a hole in one of our end caps to run our wire through to the light. You can call this our power cord. I purchased 22 gauge lamp wire cord. This cord was recommended to me over other cords like speaker wire and some other electrical cords available. We don't want this wire to pull easily out of the cap. So I'm applying a zip tie, pulling it snug around the wire and cutting it off. This should act like a stop and prevent pulling on our electrical wiring. I am using a wire stripper to strip the ends to expose the wires. I wasn't sure if polarity mattered in this application, but I did go ahead and mark up one wire to be attached to the red. I fill the cap with silicone before I pull the zip tie to snug against the cap. And then I go ahead and apply silicone to the outside. We want to make sure this is waterproof. I'm measuring about 30 feet worth of cord for this. My dad purchased one that was 15 foot from Amazon and he said it wasn't long enough. So we're going to double it. I cut the wire, stripped the ends, and now I'm ready to attach my battery charging clamp. So move to one side of the rubber from the clamp and place it over the wire, because if you don't, then you won't be able to put it back. 
and I'm running the wire through the clamp. The clamp itself has a little hole that you can push the wire through on the inside, and then it also has these little teeth or clamps that you can use a pair of pliers and pinch that wire in place so if you pull, it doesn't come away from your battery clamp. So that's what I'm working on now. Hopefully you can see that process. When you're satisfied your wire is secure, you can slide that rubber back over the clamp. And now you're set to go. Repeat the step with the red clamp. Going back to our light strip, we need to strip the ends of the wire for that too. I'm cutting some heat shrink tubing in half, so I don't need it to be that long and I'm placing it over each side of the wires. We will use this later. We need to make sure it's in place on the wire before we start, otherwise there will be no adding it. We are going to use electrical solder and a soldering iron to attach these two wires. They do make waterproof crimp kits that you can use to attach these two wires if you would prefer. I believe soldering is a stronger connection though. For those that are not familiar with soldering, the soldering iron is basically a heat source that is melting the electrical solder over the wires and then it will cool down and dry hard, kind of like wax on a candle. When it's heated, it's melt and then as it cools, it hardens. Don't be scared to try this technique. This is honestly my first time soldering ever. Once it cooled, I placed the heat shrink tubings over the two ends of the wires. The butane soldering kit that I purchased also came with a tip designed for heat shrinking tubing. If you are interested in this soldering kit, check out the video description below for a link. I wanted to test everything before sealing up the PVC pipe. If you do not have a 12 volt battery handy like me, I just use a battery maintainer to test it out. To seal this up, I'm going to start at the end with electrical wiring. I'm applying some PVC purple primer and then I will apply the PVC cement. I strongly recommend wearing gloves because this stuff is really runny and it gets everywhere. Place the end over the pipe, press on firmly and then give it a slight twist and hold for 30 seconds. We need to add something to sink this light. I am adding half inch rebar, two of them measured at a foot each. Before inserting the rebar, I add a bunch of silicone on the inside and only one side of the light. This is what I'm hoping will hold the rebar in place. Once I have the two things of rebar in there, I apply more silicone to the top and then with my fingers, I'm going to spread that silicone around and it should help hold that rebar in place. We don't want the rebar moving too much. We don't want it to damage the electrical wires inside. Once satisfied with the rebar, I apply my primer and cement and attach the other end. Just to be safe, because I'm paranoid that water is gonna get in here, I apply silicone to the lips of each of the end caps. I let this light dry for a day or two before taking it for a test run. This light is originally designed to be used in a boat with a 12 volt battery, but you can also use this off the dock or in an ice house. If you don't have a 12 volt battery available, you can use a battery maintainer. Test one, does our light sink to the bottom? Test two, does it turn on underwater? Test three, does it attract fish? There you have it. Now the rest is up to you. Thanks for watching Carly Tackles, an underwater LED fishing light. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY, tools and gadgets, tips and tricks.